Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Norman's Wisdom. Uh, if you're getting bored of these by now, I'm really sorry. I'm really close. I'm really close to putting out a vlog. In fact, there may have been a vlog go out before this goes out. I'm not sure yet in the timings. Uh, I could have brought my camera out today, really, because the weather isn't too bad, but it was absolutely chucking it down this morning and I didn't want to risk it. Hence the massive coat that I'm not using and a pair of jeans which I'm wearing. And I, I never wear jeans. You know, I'm always in shorts from pretty much the end of April all the way through to the end of September. But the British weather has forced me out in a pair of jeans today. And of course it hasn't rained and it's lovely and warm and I'm sweating, so great, lovely. Anyway, I hope you guys are all well. Like I said, I should be out with my camera in a couple of days time. And one of the first places I'm gonna to come to actually is this beautiful wheat field behind me, but I'm gonna be right at the other end of it over the back, over the back there. If you keep going up there, there's a little hill. What I'm hoping to do is catch the curvature of that hill and shoot the, the wheat. And then these trees that are in the background with the sky maybe get a leading line of where the tractor lines are. Uh, hopefully that should look really nice. In fact, you might already seen it. So if you have, then let me know, did it look all right? And if not, then don't bother because you won't know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this week, so this week, what I wanted to talk about, I've been, uh, I've been watching a few videos on YouTube as is my way. And I watched this particular one this week that sort of, well, actually it's last week now, that sort of really sort of stuck in my mind and, and uh, got me thinking about a few things. Uh, and the video basically alluded to the fact that if you shoot a panoramic, stitch a panoramic together, then you're essentially cheating in landscape photography. And I shoot a lot of panoramics and that kind of triggered me a bit. I was like, really? I'm, so that method is, is not worthy and cheating. So. But that got me thinking to a wider, onto a wider subject. And there's a lot of people who vlog, spe specifically landscape photography vlogs, and also actually it's in the wider community as well, where you get a lot of these words that are bandied around, like uh, cheating and, and hack, like an, a hack and an easy way to do something, lazy photography. And, it, and it, it got, it's got me thinking really why these words are used and what the, what the purpose is behind them. Because at the end of the day, really and truly, in my opinion, the only thing that really matters in photography, specifically in the terms of the photography. So obviously, when you go out and shoot landscape photography, it isn't all about the photography. It's about the, the walking, the being at one with nature, the beautiful vistas, the experience, the scenery, which is the same as a vista, the conditions, the elements, the the whole experience, the whole package. But when you boil it down to just the photography, the most important thing, and the really and truly the only important thing is the end product, which is the photograph. Because that's why you click that shutter in the first place, however many times you might click it. You click it to get that shot. And when you post that shot up anywhere, online or print it and put it up in your room or you show it to your parents or your family or whatever, the only thing that they can see is that end product. That's all they can see. Unless you've done a vlog. So let's say that you haven't vlogged it. Let's just say that all you've done is gone out, taken a photograph, printed it or put it on a screen and showed it to someone. The only thing they can see is that end product. And to them and to everybody else, it doesn't matter how you arrived at that end product. It doesn't matter whether you were on manual. It doesn't matter whether you shot it at ISO 100 or ISO 800. It doesn't matter if you shot a five image panorama. It doesn't matter if you focus stacked it. It doesn't matter whether you use a tripod or not. It doesn't matter if you're on manual or on aperture priority or even on fully automatic. All that matters is that one final image at the end. And whether you're happy with that image and your viewer, if you're showing it to them, is happy with that image. The rest of it is completely unimportant. So I sat there and thought to myself, why, why do people use these words? Well, I mean, I've been guilty in the past. I'm very judgmental at times. I'm very cynical. And why is that? Why am I cynical? And why would I, if I were using those words, like, you know, cheating or lazy or, you know, whatever, why would I use those words? Why would I be derogatory? or derisory to a certain type of photography 
a certain method of photography and I think for me I know exactly why I can't speak for everyone else but I know why I'm cynical and I know why I'm outspoken and I can tell you exactly why that is and I'm not afraid to tell you and I, in fact I'm you know I'm quite happy to tell you the reason that I'm like that is because I'm insecure about my own work so I'm not sure about the standard of my own photography I've never been sure about the standard of my own photography photography if I'm honest with you I think it comes from being brought up in an environment where I was a stepchild being brought into a family of natural children if you like and I was never good enough nothing I did was ever good enough I was always the spoilt one I was always the one who didn't know anything and so I've grown up with that sort of feeling that I'm not good enough and so what I do is instead of projecting that I will deflect it into the fact that I'm cynical about other people and other things and that's really wrong sometimes what I say I'm, I'm, I know sometimes what I say is valid I completely know that but there's sometimes where it's not valid and sometimes I'm just deflecting away from my own insecurities and the feeling that my photography isn't perhaps good enough by looking at other people's and the problem with that the problem is I've gone along with that is it isn't just the words that come out of my mouth it's the thoughts that are in my head so I will now sit down and watch someone's vlog and I've already prejudged because I've prejudged that person I've already prejudged what their vlog's going to be like and I will hate it even though it might be very good and it's very very difficult for me to stop that and it's very difficult to, for me to get away from that um, but I do appreciate that I do do that so I wonder I wonder whether other people have the same issue whether they are trying to deflect away from what they feel is their own substandard photography that they then push that onto something else and say well this is this because I don't want you looking you know it's sort of like it's, it's a distraction technique you know oh, I'm not sure about that oh look over there so it could be that it could be that I'm not saying it is that I'm just saying in my instance I know that when I do when I'm negative sometimes or cynical it's to deflect away from my own insecurities it could be that of course it could be I could be being cynical here again but it could be a more or there could be another ulterior motive to that which could be that somebody wants to sell a workshop so imagine if you are viewing their channel and you are one of these people who shoots in a certain way so maybe you don't shoot on manual maybe you do spend a lot of time shooting panoramic images or you know maybe you shoot aperture priority or maybe you don't use a tripod or maybe you don't use filters it may be that this person is trying to say to you that that is a an inferior way of taking a photograph because they are trying to sell you their services to say come with me and I'll show you the correct way of taking a photograph uh, you do see a lot a lot of I'm not gonna you know a lot of vloggers who used to be all about the experience of the vlog and going out and all oh, here I am and this is what I'm taking and now suddenly let me show you how to take this type of picture let me show you how to take this type of picture let me talk to you about these settings let me tell you what you're doing wrong and a lot of that is coincidentally around the time that they started running workshops and that's that's fine and I, and I can see again what you're doing there because if I were running workshops and I were weren't sh I wasn't sure about the standard of my own photography I would start producing instructional videos to give some value and to say look I can show you how to just you know how to take things how to do certain processes therefore I'm worthy of you spending your hard-earned money on me on a, in a workshop and that's that's perfectly understandable and that could be another reason another reason why these derogatory terms are thrown about could simply be because these people are a little bit snobby about it a little bit clicky a little bit I'm in the gang I'm I'm in the manual gang and I'm in the this way gang and you know this is this is the way you should take a photograph and therefore if anyone else takes it any differently you're completely wrong you're completely incorrect and I know better and it could be that as well I, I don't know I don't know I, don't, I have no idea what these people's motivation is but one thing that I will say is like I said before the most important thing is the final image and it doesn't matter how you arrive at that image really as long as you're happy with it if you're happy with it and your viewer is happy with it or you're happy that your viewer is happy with it if you don't care whether your viewer is happy with it or not then again it doesn't matter but if you're happy with that final image then it doesn't matter what process you use it doesn't matter if you were on a tripod it doesn't matter if you took a panoramic it doesn't matter if you used aperture priority it doesn't matter if you used a whatever camera it doesn't matter if you 
if you took it upside down naked it doesn't matter if you you know way you know none of it matters as long as you're happy with it that is all that matters and so don't worry if you're doing something don't let other people tell you necessarily that you're wrong because oftentimes these people aren't exactly experts themselves being a professional photographer doesn't make you necessarily a good photographer it just makes it just means that you've decided to do that job as a living there are loads and loads of photographers that equally being a photography vlogger doesn't make you an expert in photography there are loads of people out there hundreds thousands of better photographers than me who are not online who are not on youtube who are not vlogging their exploits just because i have a face on youtube and you can see my personality across does not make me a better photographer than those other hundreds of people and that's something that youtubers often forget you get to this point where you think oh i've got 10,000 subscribers i've got yeah 2,000 subscribers i've got 50,000 subscribers therefore i know everything and i'm absolutely you know fantastic and phenomenal and you must listen to me and i know what i'm talking about nope sorry subscribers people watch you not necessarily always for your photography and just because you have got a lot doesn't mean that you're a great photographer there are loads of much better photographers out there anyway i'm digressing a little bit what i'm trying to say to you is is that if you are just starting to learn photography for instance not sure you'd be watching this if you were but if you are then you don't have to shoot on manual you don't have to shoot get it all in one shot you don't have to get it spot on in camera certain things you do because you can't recover them in post but if you're happy with the way it is like for instance i had a conversation in the past where someone said to me that shot's no good because you've blown your highlights right maybe i wanted to blow my highlights maybe i liked the fact that i had blown highlights maybe you like the fact that the way you take a shot isn't necessarily what everyone else thinks that shot should be there's a there's a real thing that goes around you know composition you must have something in the foreground it must point to the midground you must have something in the background point it, it, it's a it's a it's a generic standard way that's become accepted that makes a photo that makes a photograph good and it's almost like the people who think outside of that are derided but i tell you something most of the people who are the the world's best photographers and the best photographers in history they didn't sit and follow someone else they went and set their own rules they set their own style of photography they did it their way don't worry about what anyone else is saying only worry about whether you're happy with that final picture that comes out of your camera at the end of the day don't worry about how you got there it doesn't matter that's it that's all i wanted to say anyway thanks for watching this week i hope you uh, hope you've enjoyed it i do appreciate your views i do appreciate your comments uh look if you want to thumb that thumb down it that's fine by me you know it would be nice to have a, a reason why you know but it's perfectly okay it's not a problem at all i am open to negative and constructive criticism i'm absolutely open to it so if you want to message me and tell me that you think that what i'm talking about is a load of rubbish give me a reason why i'll have that conversation with you no problem at all <laughs> anyway thank you so much for watching uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I'll see you next time. And next time, one way or another, I'm definitely going to be out with my camera. See you soon. <laughs>